ways we live our seemingly mundane everyday lives that you can become something extraordinary. This course will change your life. These are the words with which Professor Michael Pewitt begins each year of Chinese Classical, Ethical, and Political Theory, ER18, the third most popular class, the first being Economics 10A and second CS50, at Harvard, with an enrollment of approximately 560 students. ER18 delves into the works of China's most influential philosophers, including Confucius, Meng Zi, and Zhuang Zi. So how exactly can this course change your life? Chinese philosophy changed me as a human being, and I wanted to give Harvard students the same chance. I would choose Confucius. He really understands aspects of human psychology that are accurate. He understands how we can change in ways that we often don't think we can, but that we really can. And I, I find his ideas just incredibly powerful. After reading Chinese philosophy, it dawned on me um, just the degrees to which my whole ways of interacting with people, experiencing the world, were based upon these very kind of rigid patterns I had fallen into, which I think is true of most humans. We sort of pay attention to only certain things, we, we develop only certain types of relationships. And part of what I learned by reading Chinese philosophy is to say, all of this is potentially changeable and therefore potentially it's possible to make it much better. For American students who had no previous exposure to Chinese philosophy, this class has proven to be truly eye-opening. It sort of encouraged me and inspired me to become an observant learner and sort of focus my observant mind. So rather than just experiencing the world around me, I was sort of seeing it as well. And this really came into play with some meditation courses that I have been taking. And the two classes sort of worked together to really make an effect. Um, and have ultimately, I think, changed the way I see the world. Confucius talks about the fact that we try breaking our, um, like these patterns we live in our daily lives through like these rituals. And one of those rituals may be like when you people say how are you and you say good, um, like that kind of like expectation of saying just good. You don't actually tell like how are you feeling, like oh I'm having a bad day or anything like that. And you kind of become a different person when you say good because you're not that person that has all those other issues. And so then I start to like really focus in on like how do I really change into a different person when someone asks me how are you? And like you just kind of start paying attention to more things. Despite increased interest in Chinese philosophy at Harvard, scholars are still concerned about the marginalization of Eastern philosophy in academia. Is change possible? It's a deep concern of mine. I, I think, sadly, if you look at most philosophy departments in America, they call themselves philosophy departments, but they're really teaching is Western philosophy. And they don't even call themselves that. It's, it's simply philosophy. And the implication is simply that real philosophy is exclusively Western. And a common statement that's made if you ask the professors, well, why don't you also teach Chinese philosophy? They will say, oh, China doesn't have real philosophy. I think there is a Western gaze that defines Chinese philosophy as lesser, inferior, not really worth studying, certainly not worth taking seriously. I think we are blessed to live in a world where Chinese philosophy is here, it is available to us. The more we can create a culture where these are just seen as great texts that everyone should read, the better a world we, we will be living in. No one questions if we should read Plato or Shakespeare. Why do we question if we should read a Confucius or a Dufu or a Zhuangzi? Why isn't this just part of what we're commonly reading? And my hope is that is a world we're slowly building. So to my students, thank you for helping to build that world. And for a larger audience, thank you also for building a world where this will just be part of a common world culture. And I think that will be a wonderful, wonderful thing for the world.